Hello, I'm Graham Lewis, and in this video we're going to compare the variable, the sentence length, of two books. So this is two variable statistics because we're looking at the sentence length across, which is a, a quantitative variable, across a categorical variable, the title of the book, which is two different authors. So the two different books we're looking at are Awake and Dreaming, which is a teenage vampire story, and Order of the Phoenix, which is one of the seven Harry Potter books. So, how we always start with a question. So, how does the sentence length vary between the two novels, Awake and Dreaming and Order of the Phoenix? So, we're going to use box plots and histograms to describe this data and try to answer our question and tell this story. Now, remember, when you are describing a distribution of numbers, you can never only use one measurement. Often we see in the media that they only ever quote an average. That's really bad. To describe a distribution of numbers, you should always consider the shape of the distribution, the center, which could be mean, median, not usually the mode, and the spread, and of course, look for outliers and discuss. So I remember it as shape, center, spread, and outliers, um, but I don't actually do it in that order. I always start with outliers. So the first thing I always do is draw box plots. We're going to have to draw box plots anyway. But the reason I draw box plots is that I can see straight away if we have outliers present. You can see here in both novels, Awaken Dreaming and Order of the Phoenix, we have outliers present. This means that when we're considering what measurement to use for the center, we will not use the mean. We will use the median. Now, interestingly, say um, Order of the Phoenix had no outliers, and Awakening and Dreaming did have outliers, we would still have to use the median across both novels as we want to compare. So that's really important to note. You can't compare a mean with a median. So compare two medians. So we're going to use the median because we have outliers. Also for the measurement of uh, spread, we're not going to use the standard deviation because that will be upset by the mean. So we're going to use the interquartile range. So notice a few things about this box plot first. Notice that we have title, figure one, and a nice title, box plots to show the mean number of word per sentence across the two novels, Awake and Dreaming and Order of the Phoenix. So it's in context, a nice title. We also have the um, axes labeled, the number of words in a sentence, and the vertical axis, the novel, the categorical variable. So make sure your diagrams and graphs are well labeled and have good titles in context. Okay, let's have a look at the histogram now. Again, looking at the histogram, notice it's labeled figure two, a nice title again, and the axes are labeled. Um, now let's think about describing the center of this distribution using the median. So we'll need the summary statistics. So I used Excel to get the summary statistics, and we're going to use the median, because we've got outliers, uh, to describe the typical sentence length. So we can see that the median of Awakened Dreaming is 7 words per sentence, and the median of Order of the Phoenix is 15 words per sentence. I'd like you to pause the video now and try and write a sentence in context as clearly and succinctly as possible to describe the typical and then we'll have a look at my sentence. So pause the video and you try writing the sentence. Okay, and here's my sentence. The typical sentence length in the order of the Phoenix is much higher than the novel Awake and Dreaming, with a median of 15 words per sentence compared to seven words per sentence. Notice a few things about this. I've used the word typical, which is nice. So it's nice and easy to understand. I've done it in context, the sentence length. I've named the two books, Order of the Phoenix and the novel Awaken Dreaming, in context. And I've actually given that it's the median sentence length I'm comparing with the actual numbers in context. So those are some of the key things to include there. Now pause the video and you can see that the interquartile range, the spread, is 5 for Awaken Dreaming and 14.25 for Order of the Phoenix. Try writing your sentence right now. And here's my sentence to tell the story behind the spread of the two distributions using the interquartile range. So the Order of the Phoenix has a much greater variety of sentence length than the novel Awake and Dreaming, with an interquartile range of 14.25 words per sentence compared to 5 words per sentence. 
Another way of saying that, again in context and to make it clearly, in the novel Awake and Dreaming, the sentence length is much more consistent than in The Order of the Phoenix. Again, notice I've put it in context with the two novels and I've said which spread I'm using, the interquartile range, and I've actually given the figures of 5 and 14.25. Now, let's try outliers. So you can see the box plot identified that Awake and Dreaming has four outliers and Order of the Phoenix has two outliers. Try writing a couple of sentences telling the story comparing the outliers of the book. So pause the video now and write your sentences. Now one thing I noticed when I was writing my sentence and thinking about this is all of the outliers in Awake and Dreaming would not have been considered outliers in Order of the Phoenix, which I think is interesting. So I've put that into my sentence. Let's compare my sentence to yours now. Both books have very long sentences, which are considered outliers compared to the rest of the sentences in that book. Awakened Dreaming has four outliers of very long sentences, 19, 20, 21, and 24 words per sentence. None of these would be considered outliers in the novel Order of the Phoenix, which has two very long sentences, which are outliers of 47 and 78 words per sentence. Our final... Um, description needs to be on the shape of the distribution. We can see that both distributions are not symmetrical. In fact, they're positively skewed. Um, so we can see that in the histograms and we can also see it in the box plots. The histograms are showing a positive skew. We can see that there and there. And we can also see it in the box plots. And in the box plots, we can see the positive skew because a longer right tail compared to the left and again here a longer right tail compared to the left. So that's how we can tell it's positively skewed. Notice in, um, in Order of the Phoenix that actually the middle half of the data looks fairly symmetrical, whereas the middle half of the data in Awake and Dreaming still has that positive skew. So I would argue that possibly Awake and Dreaming is actually a, has a higher positive skew than maybe um, Order of the Phoenix. Pause the video now. Try and write your sentence about the um, shape of the distribution. This is the one I find the hardest to write, I will be honest. So my sentence is both distributions are positively skewed, indicating that more of the sentences are shorter in length with fewer, much longer sentences. Because we can see that clumping um, giving that positive skew with more of the area in the histogram on the left hand side than on the right. And you can see I've shown that on the histogram with more of the area um, on the left-hand side than on the right. Hence a positive skew there. Thank you very much. Remember to never describe a distribution with only one measurement, the centre, which is a common error. You need to describe shape, centre, spread and outliers. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day.